welcome friends so today's topic is non tuberculous mycobacteria so these are the objectives of the today's lecture first we will discuss the renyons classification of non tuberculous mycobacteria then we will see the clinical importance of the non tuberculous mycobacteria and at last we will discuss the laboratory diagnosis of this type of organism so first we will talk about the non tuberculous mycobacteria which is also called the atypical mycobacteria or mycobacteria other than tuberculosis that is called mott this non tuberculous mycobacteria are diverse group of mycobacteria that are isolated from the birds animals and environmental sources like soil and water some of the species uh, of the mycobacteria are saprophytic mycobacteria which do not cause any disease in humans while the majority of the member of this group are opportunistic pathogen which can cause the disease in the patient with lower immunity so here is the renyons classification this classification is based on the pigment production and rate of the growth so this are the so so this is the classification so this classification having a four broad groups among this the first one is a photochromogens photo means light so the photochromogens having a property like it produce the pigment only in the presence of light the member which is important of this group is m marinum and m cancersi then the second group is scotochromogens that means it produce pigments both in light as well as in a dark the most important member of this group is m scrofulaceum then the third group is non photochromogens means that uh, it does not produce the pigments the important member of this group is mac that is mycobacterium avium intracellular complex that is mac that is mac and the other important uh, member of this group is m ulcerans and the finally the fourth group which is a rapid growers rapid growers means it can be grow within a one week the important member of this group is m colonae let's talk about the clinical manifestation so here is the list of uh, disease that can be caused by the non tuberculous mycobacteria the first we will talk about the lymphadenopathy which can be caused by the mycobacterium avium intracellular complex that is mac and mycobacterium scrofulaceum in the skin lesion among the skin lesion there is a first is post trauma abscess which can be caused by the mycobacterium colonae then the swimming pool granuloma which is also called the fish tank granuloma which can be caused by the mycobacterium marinum then the buruli ulcer which can be caused by the mycobacterium ulcerans then the respiratory disease uh, this disease is caused by the mac that is mycobacterium avium intracellular complex then m cancersi then the m xenopi and other members of the group and at last the disseminated disease among this some are related to aids and some are non related to aids so the aids uh, the mac is can be caused the both type of disseminated disease then we will talk about the mycobacterium avium intracellular complex in detail so this complex is made up of mycobacterium avium and mycobacterium intracellular so this uh, this is the complex of this two because it cannot be differentiated this mac is non photochromogens that means it does not produce the pigments then uh, it can be caused the mostly opportunistic pathogen mostly in hiv infected people so when the hiv infected people having a less than 50 cd4 t cell count then the chances of this uh, infection of this mac is will be increased mac can cause a various manifestation among this lymphadenitis which can be shown in picture then respiratory infection and disseminated disease are the most common ones then we will talk about the scrofulation
Scrofula. A scrofula is a disease which can be caused by the Mycobacterium scrofulaceum. This Mycobacterium scrofulaceum is a scotochromogenes. That means it can produce the pigment in both light as well as in the dark. It can cause the scrofula. In scrofula, patient comes with the cervical lymphadenopathy which can be seen in the picture. Mostly the children are affected with the scrofula in compare of adults. So let's talk about the swimming pool granuloma. The causative agent of the swimming pool granuloma is Mycobacterium marinum. Swimming pool granuloma is also called the fish tank granuloma. Mycobacterium marinum is a photopromogens that means it can only produce the pigment in the presence of light. When the patient is associated with the aquarium then he gets the fish tank granuloma. When the patient is associated with the swimming pool then he gets the swimming pool granuloma. Patient comes with the papules or ulcer which is called the granuloma and for the tendonitis. When patient is associated with the swimming pool then the uh, in the most exposed site of the body is knee, elbow and feet while in the case of fish tank granuloma the most common uh, site are hands and fingers which can be shown in the figure. Here there is a figure of fish tank granuloma a patient having a papule or ulcer. Mycobacterium marinum can be grown only at 33 degrees Celsius not in the not at the 37 degrees Celsius and this Mycobacterium marinum is enters through the minor troma where he de when the, where the patient develops the different papules or ulcers that is called the swimming pool or fish tank granule. Then we will talk about the Burule ulcer. The causative agent of this ulcer is Mycobacterium ulcera. This is called Burule ulcer because it derived from the Burule district of Uganda where there is a large outbreak had occurred. It is a non photochromogens that means it does not produce the pigment. It is a waterborne disease. Here patient comes with a painless nodule which will be seen in the picture. This nodule becomes the necrotic later. Patient also comes with the osteomyelitis and the limb deformities. This mycobacterium ulceran produced the exotoxin which is called the mycolecton. This toxin uh, may be involved in the pathogenesis of the disease. Mycobacterium ulceran having a narrow temperature range for growth that is 31 to 34 degrees Celsius and it grows slowly. Colonies will be appear into 2 to 4 weeks. Then the chronic pulmonary disease which can be caused by the Mycobacterium cancer. See? This Mycobacterium cancer is photochromogen. The source of this in infection is from the soil, water and milk. This chronic pulmonary disease which is produced by the Mycobacterium cancer is resembling a tuberculosis. Then the risk factor. Old person with pre-existing lung disease or impaired immune response are more prone to this type of infection. Organism grows well at 37 degrees Celsius on LJ media where it produces the yellow-orange pigment that can be seen in the picture. Then at last the laboratory diagnosis. First the specimen collection. So the specimen can be collected depending on the type of infection. So there is a sputum, pus, lymph node aspirate, biopsy, etc. Specimen will be collect, collected. Then we will do the microscopy. In microscopy, we will do the acid fast staining. In this, there is a red acid fast bacilli, which is similar to mycobacterium tuberculosis. But we have to differentiate it. So we will do the culture exercise and identification of the non-tuberculous mycobacteria. So for the culture, 
we, uh, we will do the culture on uh, LJ medium and we will put the LJ medium into the incubation in light and dark separately for differentiation between the photochromogens and scotochromogens. Then identification. Identification is done by the uh, different methods. Among this most important and most commonly used method is MPT64 antigen. This MPT64 antigen test is a rapid test uh, the, uh, based on the principle of immunochromatography. Uh, in the case of mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, this test becomes the positive. While in the case of NTM, that is non-tuberculous mycobacteria, the NPT64 antigen test becomes the negative. Then we will also do the newer methods like MALDITOR and PCR. These methods currently preferred and for the uh, species differentiation of non-tuberculous mycobacteria. Then we will also do the biochemical for differentiation of the mycobacterium tuberculosis from atypical mycobacteria. So niacin test, nitrate test and pyrazinamidase test is positive in the case of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Then Mycobacterium ulceran and Mycobacterium melanum can be grown at 32 and 33 degrees Celsius respectively, while the Mycobacterium tuberculosis can be grown at 37 degrees Celsius. The catalyst test comes positive in the case of atypical Mycobacteria, while Mycobacterium tuberculosis gives catalyst test negative. Some of the species of Mycobacteria can be grown at on the McConkey's agar, while the Mycobacterium tuberculosis gives the, it cannot grow the on the McConkey's agar. So this was all about the non-tuberculous mycobacteria. Thank you.